I think I got it working. Yay! I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but we finally got this working. Hello, everybody. My name is Gina, and uh, I am known here on the internet as the Gina Chu, and we are playing Asagao Academy. And I'm so excited. So let's get started. Chapter one. Okay. <clears throat> I have to get on my narration voice. Hold on one second. <clears throat> The train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me farther and farther from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half buried in a newspaper. He was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and hadn't spoken a single word to me, even after I asked if I could join him in the last compartment with any available space. He shrugged, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It had been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't once looked at me. Devoid of conversation, I took instead to counting the buttons on the pretentiously lush carmine seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. Now and again I turned to look out the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue of the Sea of Japan. Eventually this rapidity made my stomach churn and I went back to counting the buttons on the seat cushions. One, two, three. The train compartment shuddered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school-issued blue that I and the other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green varsity-like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on front. Hmm. Uh, it's Jared! <laughs> He's sparkling! <laughs> I, I pretty much know nothing about this game so this is going to be completely blind i'm hoping that i don't you know mess anything up i'm hoping that i don't mess anything up but um yeah i have no idea what's coming so this is going to be exciting <laughs> i did not expect jared right at the beginning but i'm very happy i like the art in this game it's good all right <clears throat> and i'm not doing voices for the characters by the way because i think i would be terrible at that so you're a first year then? He folded his newspaper neatly, set it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. Did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy-lidded eyes. His hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost... sparkling? <laughs> Look, he doesn't even have his shirt buttoned up and his tie is like half undone. That's fantastic. Um. Me? <laughs> he glanced around the compartment, empty beside us, and laughed. Oh, no, I'm not a first year. I'm a third year. The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of an impression would I leave puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? The boy frowned. I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. Mm. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth fishing to find a response. Uh. I, uh, uh, it's... Because I'm a transfer student? <laughs> he laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavyweight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and rereading, as if the words might have changed since the last time I read it. I do that a lot. When I read stuff, I read stuff like over and over again, as if it's going to be different. The boy took it, studied it, and handed it back to me. I'll see you around. I, I love that they did their own voice acting, by the way. I think it's fantastic. Well then, Hannah, I suppose I'll be seeing you around. He smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, having gotten it from my acceptance letter, knew my name, and I never got his. The train settled at the station and I filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. 
It was early April, and the last frost of winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering and the occasional gust weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with the swarm of blue-jacketed bodies, looking at the little groups breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so animatedly around me. I held my suitcase t tight there. I held my suitcase tight in my sooty hands. It was leather-bound and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the school, and I was, for maybe the first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school-issued black Oxfords click-click-clicked on the pavement. I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I laid awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from, trains, from the train station to Asagao Academy the first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk that somehow everything would be magically different. But as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. I, ha I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gate to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gate's twisting black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photo I saw in its pamphlets. This was it. Asagao Academy. I glanced around. The swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost palpable. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. As the rest of the group shifted into motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself into knots. The crowd split off in different directions. For a moment, I panicked. Oh. A tired-looking man with graying hair called out for the first years, a cluster of fresh-faced students gathering around him. Hey, hey, look at that girl! I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. That's not nice. Pink hair? Are you kidding me? Hey, pink hair's awesome, okay? I don't want to hear any sass from generic posh boy. <laughs> How desperate can you get? Hot shame crawled down my neck. I attached myself to a group of girls, following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas hummed in, the, in time to my shoes crunching against gravel. We get a lot of cicadas here on Long Island. I know that sound all too well. Oop, no. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign in the lawn reading Primrose House. I like that name. The building dwarfed me in size and sheer intimidation. How many students did Asagao have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. She was staring at me. I'm trying to keep the pointer <laughs> away from the middle of the screen. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! <laughs> Gee, you're excited. I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. What? Me? Bingo. Of course, you silly. Let me guess. Room 325? I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. Uh. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I find out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to be a total main character. Well, I mean, I have pink hair, so obviously I'm the main character. I'm sorry. A what? Mm-hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on campus, and I was already being mocked. My hands began to tremble. Is... Is there something wrong with my hair? 
Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's great. I'm sorry. Um, we're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm my Sasaki. You must be Hana. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in our room with your welcome letter, and I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Mai started walking towards the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy. Did you check it at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good! They'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour of the campus, but I can show you around. We don't get many transfer students in year three, you know. <gasps> oh, is that your only bag? Just the one? I'm glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate our room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. But I did wait to string the lights. I thought we could do it together, you know? She spoke quickly, the words bubbling from her mouth, and left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. She held the front door open for me and I hurried inside. Girls filed up and down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague niceties that were, more often than not, how was your break and look how tan you got. It seemed like everyone knew each other. I know those feels because when I was in my elementary and middle school years, I transferred schools a lot for like various different reasons. And it is the worst feeling to walk into a brand new school and realize that everybody knows each other and you're like the only odd one out. It is the most awkward feeling. So I completely empathize with Hannah on this. I followed Mai as she led me through the maze of students and up two flights of stairs. Each dorm floor looked like the same as the last narrow white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Thin gold numbers were tacked to the front of each, the numbers rising as we climbed. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does them every year and he's like totally dull. He just drags you around the entire campus and talks in that weird squeaky voice of his. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smile, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down a hallway on the third floor. Mai stopped us in front of a door numbered 325. Here we are. Oh, cute. Oh, this is a really neat dorm room. See, J Japan gets all the nice stuff, man. <laughs> Here in America, this is this would be like the biggest dorm room in the history <laughs> of ever. But it's cute. I like it. <clears throat> A faint smell of potpourri wafted through the room. The walls, like the hallway, were a soft, powdery pink. Mai already defaced them with a tapestry of posters, magazine cutouts, and photographs. You're missing an Oxford comma here. All of my feels. I'm sorry, I noticed these things. It's writer problems. Some of the photos were of cats, but most were of male models and rugged musicians. <laughs> Look at the cats. <laughs> a bunk bed, two writing desks with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. The top bunk was already covered in neatly tucked blankets and throw pillows of clashing patterns and colors. The bottom bunk had a single stiff looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch to know was horribly itchy. I must have grimaced because Mike quickly smiled at me. I bought way too many pillows and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over break and mom got really mad at me because I bought five bags but we were only there for a week. <laughs> She laughed, pulled several blankets and pillows from her bunk, and rearranged them neatly on mine. Oh, uh, you see, she's, uh, you know, a little... You, you know, she comes off at first as, you know, typical rich girl, but she seems really sweet. I mean, she gave us her blankets and stuff. Thank you, Mai. That's very sweet of you. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection. There, that's much better. <laughs> Thanks, Mai. 
I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothing, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, a dilapidated stuffed rabbit, an old portable radio, and a small black box. <coughs> Mai opened the curtains and sunlight poured in. So, where are you from? I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. About two hours north of here, it's a small town called Amaririsu. I think I got that right. You probably haven't heard of it. I set the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny, on my bed beside a purple and teal throw pillow. Oh, did you go to a different boarding school or... Oh no, I went to a public school down the street from my house. Really? P public school? What was that like? Were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents work a lot and my dad goes overseas, so I think they stuck me here for convenience. Oh, hey, what's that? I'd removed an ornately patterned origami crane from the black box and was setting it on the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. I set it beside a stack of thick textbooks, which I assumed were provided for me. Um, I'm gonna call it now that the mom's probably dead? Cause she's got a picture of her dad, but she's got the origami thing that her mom made? I don't know, we'll have to see. Aww. Wow, it's so pretty! I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh yeah, the lights! Let me get them. Mai went to her own desk, opened the drawer, and pulled out a long, tangled string of fairy lights. I thought these would look nice. Here, help me string them up. She grabbed a container of pushpins, then pulled her wooden desk chair out and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together, we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride over? Did you meet anyone? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, <laughs> maybe just like a little person, you know, whatever. Just like some, you know, person. You probably don't know who he is. Uh, no, not really. I was in a compartment with some guy and... What? Why do I keep hitting that button? Okay, be careful with him. Some guy, huh? Was he cute? Uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I really wasn't paying attention. I didn't even get his name. Uh. Mai seemed disappointed for a moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point him out to me if you see him again. Uh, okay. Once we finished stringing the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah! Done! Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. There's this ramen place down the street from the campus that's like out of this world. But the school only lets us leave campus on weekends. My walk to the window. We could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out, but I guess you might want to go to the calf since you just got here. We could... <laughs> she was suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh! Mimi Santos just totally tripped outside and fell on her face! I saw it! Um, it's not a good thing to be excited about. <laughs> oh, is that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh well, anyways, let's go eat! I'm totally starved. She led me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing with students excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were the tables of skittish, wide-eyed first years. I stepped into line behind Mai, taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through, asking for helpings from the sulky cafeteria workers when we passed. <clears throat> I'm sorry, when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, Mai led me straight to a table in the back, where a few students were already sitting. Mai sat down and I took a seat across from her. Hi, Mai. How was your break? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off a jet ski and broke his ankle. Uh -huh. That's not good. It's better now, though. Oh, well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl turned back to her group of friends and Mai turned back to me. 
She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me, in a practically minute-by-minute -minute account, about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. I sat back and let my talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. I picked up my Brussels sprouts and studied Mai as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. What? She was dynamic, her face twisting this way and that into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. <laughs> she laughed often. <gasps> she imitated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. I do that too. <laughs> Actually, I make stupid voices for people regardless of whether I like them or not. But most notably, she talked. A lot. I didn't find this particularly annoying, as it filled the silence and she hardly ever asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Mai was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing, a flash of familiar green caught my eye. I glanced over. <gasps> hey, that's him! Oh no. <laughs> huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper, just in case he could hear me through the ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train, that's him. What? Jared? Um, yeah, with the weird green jacket and the swoopy hair. <laughs> swoopy hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was a good choice of words. I enjoyed that. He just picked up his tray and was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. Oh, you. That was a weird error. <laughs> Yay, error messages. At least it lets you ignore it. I looked up at him and suddenly realized he was talking to me. Hana. Hana, I met you on the train. How are things settling down for you? <laughs> really well. I found my roommate and she's been helping me out. I gestured to Mai, who was thunderstruck. In fact... Looking around, everyone was. <laughs> oh no. People stopped eating to turn and stare at Jared and me. <clears throat> Jared and I. My shoulders bunched around my neck. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? I nodded. All right. Some of my friends are in that year. Of course, they can't compare to me, but I'll give them a heads up to look out for you. Thank you for your benevolence, Jared. And your sparkles. I appreciate them both. He flashed a dazzling smile, then winked. <laughs> it's the least I can do for such a cute girl. Well, I'll see you around. I watched a torrent of thoughts raging through my head as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket? <laughs> That's Jared! She tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute! He's the most beautiful guy in school! Oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing in an indecent pink. I thought it said incandescent for a second. I was going to be like, what? Indecent pink. Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear blue blazers as part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to. They're... You know Jared? That girl turned back around and was looking at me with sudden interest. Uh, oh, now, now you want to know who I am. Appreciate that. I... Did I know him? I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes, so not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, Amaya and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everybody seemed to be listening in. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie couldn't hurt? Oh no! <laughs> Do we tell the truth? <laughs> or do we exaggerate it a little bit? Oh jeez. Uh, I think it'll be funnier to say I <laughs> to say I guess so. The girl looked me up and down as if she were inspecting a piece of furniture for purchase. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier, did I? I'm Mimi. Is this the girl that fell flat on her face earlier? 
that you were laughing at my jeez nice to meet you so how did you meet Jared <laughs> oh come off it Mimi Jared's not interested uh oh somebody's jealous Mai and Mimi stared at each other for a few seconds having some kind of silent mental battle then Mimi turned away and continued to eat hmm Sorry, it was clear that she was just trying to get in with you for her own agenda, so I cut her off. Oh, yeah, I thought that was obvious, too. Get in with me? Why? Well, you asked me about those guys in their jackets, right? Those are their normal boots club jackets. Um. They're... What? What's normal boots club? <gasps> ah! <laughs> Look at that art! Look at Jared! This ham back here! Look at him with his mirror! <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, hello! Um, SavvySav52, hello! Welcome to the chat. May I ask who you are going for? I don't know who I'm going to go for. Several of my friends told me that John Tron was the only option. Um, these were all my male friends, by the way. <laughs> that told me that I needed to romance John Tron. Um, but I don't know. I, my first intention was to go for Jared, but John Tron would be really good too. I mean, any of them really. Maybe PBG? I don't know. I'm not sure who I'm gonna go for, really. Um, Savvy, yeah, if you have a suggestion, please share. I mean, I figured I would play a little bit and see whose personality I kind of vibed with the most. I mean, Jared's a little stuck up, but in these kind of games, those kind of characters tend to um, usually have some kind of deeper insecurity within them, you know, once you get to know them. Uh, you really like PBG. Yeah, PBG seems like he would be a good choice. But a lo several of my friends told me that I really should go for JonTron, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I will go for PBG. We'll have to see. He's, he's distracted by this game. Ja Jacques is wearing a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this game is fantastic already. <laughs> oh, the art is really good. This is the cutest picture. I love it. Anyway. <clears throat> it's a club we have at school here. It's like totally exclusive and full of only the coolest students. Oh, you get the bird with John Tron too, Savvy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I heard that Jacques was like a, a secret romance thing, maybe. I mean, look, Jacques is cool. But I just, I love John Tron. I think he's adorable. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I want to see how I meet him. I want to see what kind of character he is in this game. <laughs> they get together and play video games or something. You don't even know what they do. You just know that he's popular. Good job. Good job, mine. That one right there is John, also known as John Tron. His bird's name is Jacques. <laughs> Jacques looks like he's about to kill a bitch. I don't even know. <laughs> John is also the president of the drama club here at school. I am not shocked at that at all. PBG's wife did the art savvy? I did not know that. That is awesome. Yeah, her name is Danielle Unicornism, right? I've, I've seen some of her stuff. I didn't recognize her, her, uh, her art style. That's pretty awesome. Next to him is PBG. He and John founded the Normal Boots Club together. That's right, they founded the website together. PBG is one of the best soccer players on our team. Then there's Gerard. People call him the completionist because he's obsessed with completing things. He has the biggest itty bitty kitty collection I've ever seen. I've seen a couple of Gerard's videos, but not too many. 
Next to him is Jared, also known as Pro Jared. He's a model. Then there's Satchbag, but everybody calls him Satch. He's like crazy smart. The guys over there are Paul, Nick, and Josh. They write a column in the school newspaper called Continue. I love the Continue guys. They are an awesome group of people. Paul, the one standing up, is the student council president. Of course Paul's the student council president. I love it. And the guy on the end there is Shane. He knows more about video games than anyone. Ever. She exhaled a dreamy sigh into her mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, God, these descriptions are fantastic. They range from really well done and very eloquent to just hilarious, and I love it. So, how would someone, you know, join the normal boots club? <laughs> you can't just walk into the normal boots club! <laughs> You don't choose the boots, Hannah. The boots choose you. <laughs> it's true. What does that even mean? You have to be presented with the boots to be in the club, and they're, like, super selective. What are the boots? The club has this boot statue. It's like the one on their patches, but it's gold-plated. It's their mascot, I guess? They do this weird initiation ritual with it. <gasps> ritual? Uh, Savvy, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people complaining about Shane's story being really difficult. I have never seen any of Shane's videos, though, so I'm probably not going to go for him, or he might be, like, one of the last guys I go for. Um... But yeah, I've heard a lot of people have been having a lot of difficulty. <laughs> I hear they fill a room with candles and wear these totally creepy robes during initiation. The, this year two girl said she saw it once and they were all like chanting around the boots and it sounded like they were talking backwards. Oh god. But I don't believe her. And even if it's true, I don't care if they're a cult because they're all really hot. Now that's a... Fan fantastic perspective to have that's definitely not gonna make you wind up dead in a gutter somewhere someday <laughs> do they have a lot of friends yeah tons of friends i'd say they're the most popular kids in school i mean everyone in the school totally looks up to them i bet they could get any girl in school too or boy for that matter hey are you gonna eat your cake I shook my head and pushed the plastic tray across the table to her. <laughs> oh, Savia, yeah, you... Okay, so you know Pro Baron PBG and kind of know Gerard and JonTron. I, I know JonTron and PBG very well. I've seen a few of Gerard's videos, and I've seen a good handful of Pro Jared's, and I've seen a lot of continue videos, but other than that, I mean, the, as far as the normal boots group is anyway I, I know that hidden block guys are in this game too and i'm excited for them because i'm a big fan of hidden block as well but yeah it seems like this is pretty approachable like regardless of whether you've seen their videos or not which is good because i can enjoy all the characters regardless of how many of their videos i've seen for the remainder of lunch i listened to my talk about jared through mouthfuls of half dissolved frosting Back at the dorm, I sorted through the pile of textbooks the school left for me. My radio was playing a poppy tune, equal parts music to static. My fervently scribbled in a notebook at her desk, hunched over it with strikingly poor posture. Hey, hey Mai? Mm-hmm. She didn't bother to look up. Am I supposed to have a textbook for History 309? Uh... Uh... She shuffled through the papers on her desk before producing a thick textbook. A demure man in a powdered wig frowned at me from the cover. Yeah, this one. I sighed. I don't have that one. The school must have missed it. My shrugged and set the textbook back in her pile. They have a bunch at the library. You can just check one out. Where's the library? My riffled through her notebook and wrote something down. She tore the page out and handed me a crudely drawn map. Oh... Okay, well, I'll be back in a little bit. 
Oh, uh, okay. So, for those of you that are watching that don't know, I am I am a writer, and nothing makes me happier than a beautiful library or bookstore. And this scene is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm very happy right now. It took me at least 20 minutes to find the library. By the time I realized I was holding the map upside down, the sun was setting. Oh, <laughs> poor Hana. The library was much larger than I expected. The walls lined from floor to ceiling with books of all sizes on rough wooden shelves. Intimidated, I headed for the front desk. A recognizably green and gray jacket was bent behind the counter. N normal boots. Oh, who could it be? I'm thinking maybe Satch? I briefly considered running away. Yeah, I called it. Can I help you? Too late. Uh, yeah, the school forgot to give me one of my textbooks. I was told I could get it here. Hmm. Which one is it? The History 309 textbook. He stepped from behind the counter and motioned for me to follow. We dodged between the aisles in a comfortable silence. He seemed friendly enough. I should say something. What was his name again? Shane? Gerard? John? No, not John! <laughs> Correct! Good job! Huh? Oh, um, you work here? Ugh, of course he worked here. That's <laughs> a, he chuckled, dimples appearing in his cheeks. Yeah, I'm the librarian's assistant. It's my second year and I love it. I get to help people find books that speak to them. Oh, see, I have a feeling. See, he's a book lover. I... <laughs> I can't resist those kinds of characters. Oh. <laughs> I'm clearly going to have a crisis as to who to choose. <laughs> His eyes twinkled like a kid on Christmas. Your book's right down here. He stopped at a row of thick, dusty books. Was this all history? And pulled out the book with the powder wig man I saw earlier. <laughs> Thanks. He waved his hand. It was nothing. Do you need help with anything else? Um. I wanted to make a good impression on the Normal Boots Club, but I couldn't come up with anything. No. Thanks. Copacetic. You're welcome. As we headed back through the cavernous library, my unease melted away. We weren't talking, but just being near him felt like being wrapped in a soft blanket. I resisted the urge to snuggle up to him. We neared the front desk, stepping around a clump of studying students. As we passed, one of them shifted. Ah! <gasps> uh? Something white flew past my face. A thick piece of triangular paper lay at my feet. I bent over and picked it up. It was surprisingly heavy. There was a quarter inside of it. If I was just a hair slower, it would have hit me in the face. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? The students snickered, and I recognized the boys that made fun of my hair this morning among them. Kids. My heart dropped. I scanned my memory for anything I might have done to offend them, but came up with nothing. My hand started to shake. I hid it behind my back, trying to think of some way to defend myself. Why did you do that? Oh? Huh? What do you mean? We were just messing around. Are you suggesting we did it on purpose? Uh, th that's exactly what I'm suggesting. I faltered. There was nothing I could say. I was outnumbered. They would twist my words around no matter how straightforward I was. Welcome back, Savvy. Uh, no, I... Sorry. One of the boys held his hand out for the paper. I inched closer to give it to him, angry at myself for being so compliant. Oh. I know these socially awkward feels. Oh, just my heart. <laughs> I wish I were... A gentle warmth closed over my hand and took the paper from me. Hmm. Satch examined the paper closely. I see what the problem is. Your aim would be better if you cut the corners before you folded it. He placed the paper on the table. The boy looked at him in sheer awe. Be careful, though. You almost hit her, and that would have been awful. My hands began to sweat as panic shifted through me, afraid of the response, but... Jeez, we're sorry. We'll be careful next time. Yeah, it was an accident. They apologized? <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. He gave them a wide smile and continued off down the aisles. I followed closely behind, my legs weak. 
Don't tell me they stopped because of him? Simply because I was with him? I wanted to thank him, but my heart was pounding so hard I knew my voice would shake. We reached the front counter and he scanned the history book. My lips trembled as I willed myself to say something, anything to thank him. He tilted his head to the side. What books do you like to read? Mm. Oh, um, I'm in the middle of the Game of Thrones series. No. <laughs> Tyrion Lannister is really great. <laughs> oh, uh, fiction? I love fiction. He chuckled. I just finished a good book. I think it'd be right up your alley if you don't mind me saying so. He reached under the counter and pulled out a thick green book and passed it to me. A man in black stood on the front, hugging a woman in royal robes. It's long, but it's one of my favorites. The Princess Betrothed. I know things can be tough transferring to a new school. If you've ever worried, just read this. It'll transport you a hundred miles away in a second. Aw, Sat, you're so sweet. Tears stung my eyes, so I ducked my Satch. head. Thank you, Satch. For more than just the books. You're welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think I got your name. My name is Hana Mizuno. I'm a transfer student. Well, it's nice to meet you, Hana. Let me know how you like the book. I will. Uh, let's save. Just to be safe. That could have gone be that couldn't have gone better. Not only was Satch impossibly kind, but being around him felt easy, refreshing. Like being doused in the mist of a waterfall. Oh gosh, what was I thinking? Yeah, seriously, what are you thinking? <laughs> My cheeks hot, I left the library, two surprisingly heavy books under one arm. I settled into bed, eager to get started with my new reading material, but... <sighs> Mai was sitting at her desk, carving a pencil idly into the pages of a notebook. Every few minutes, she released a long, drawn-out sigh as the lead of her pencil whined against the paper. I lowered my book and took the bait. Is something wrong, Mai? <sighs> Asagao Stingers! Oh, I guess that's the soccer team that PBG's on. She let out another dreary sigh. I hope Jared notices me this year. <laughs> senpai, notice me, please! Jared Senpai, please! <laughs> I really want to romance Jared, but I almost feel bad because Mai really likes him. And, I, like, I feel like, you know, you know how guys are like bros before hoes, you know? I feel like I wouldn't want to mess with that if she really likes him that much. Anyway. Does Jared know you like him? <laughs> My world around in feigned shock. What? I don't like Jared. Oh. I closed my book and set it aside, deciding to play well. along. Well. Well, have you at least tried talking to him? <laughs> no. I mean, I have before. Why don't you try again? She bobbed her head from side to side, considering this like it never crossed her mind before. Yeah, maybe I could do that. Satisfied, I picked my book back up. Have you ever had a boyfriend, Hana? What? Huh? M me? No, never. Really? Really? Never? Mm. Never. I bet you 10,000 yen that you meet a totally cute boy here and fall in love by the end of the school year. Fries before guys. Savvy, I love that. Fries before guys. I will absolutely agree with that. <laughs> You're crazy. I buried my face back in my book, barring my from any further discussion. Fall in love by the end of the year? Me? If I were a betting kind of girl, I'd take that bet. I awoke the next morning with what felt like a lizard in my throat. <laughs> Mai was already up, shuffling through her school bag with an enigmatic grin. The first day of school. Hana! Hana, you're finally awake! Her voice sliced through the air like a knife and I winced. She was definitely a morning person. Oh, I am not a morning person. It's time for the first day of school! Aren't you excited? I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. 
What do you mean? Is something special happening today? <laughs> <laughs> something strange always happens on the first day of school, especially to someone like you. She's breaking the fourth wall all over the place. She what? went. Someone like me? Uh-huh. You know what I mean. She smiled and started messing with a pile of papers on her desk. Shaking my head, I got out of bed and pulled my uniform out of my closet. My palms sweat as I held the gold vest and blue jacket. Was it really possible for things to be different here than they were at home? Sure. Why not? What if the problem wasn't actually the school? I shook the thoughts out of my head and changed into my uniform. Well, things are what you make of them, Hannah. Oh! Hmm? What is it? Huh? You look so cute! Really? R really? He crept up my neck. Yeah! Yes, completely! Your hair matches your uniform so well! It's like she was designed in a really good way. You look like a flower blooming straight out of the ground! <laughs> uh, thank you! Water stung the back of my eyes and I turned to start packing my backpack. Why was I getting worked up about something as little as this? I must have gotten less sleep than I thought. Is something wrong? <laughs> no, nothing's wrong! I'm just... happy. How dumb was that? I started crying at the first sight of someone being nice to me? I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. <laughs> what an oddly menacing lap! Thud. All the air left by lungs is something like horse hooves slammed against my back. <gasps> Ugh. You'll do just fine! Don't worry, this is gonna be awesome! I stiffly peered over my shoulder. That... That was you? What? Huh? Mai stood behind me, her hand raised. Somehow she had the strength of a bodybuilder. Nothing. I was just about to zip my bag up when I spotted the book Satch gave me lying on my nightstand. Princess betrothed. He said that if I ever needed to be transported somewhere far away, I could take it with me. It was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be smart to bring it along just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. That's what I always did. I always had a book on me in school. Would I need it for my first day of class? Ha! Ah, okay, so here's an interesting thing. I assume taking it is probably good for Satch's romance route. But I'm not sure if I want to go that way, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt to take it. See, people have had so much difficulty with this game that I find myself hesitant to just... You know, usually if there's a specific route, I'll look up, you know, what to choose to get a, a general sense. But this is totally blind, so I guess I'll just act the way that I would act. I would take it with me. So I'm going to take the book. I put it into my already overfull bag, biting my lip. It never hurt to be prepared, right? You ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Stick with me and you'll be fine. Mai opened the door and together we stepped out into the hallway, merging into a steady flow of chatter chittering girls and fruit-flavored perfume. Oh my, my! <laughs> I didn't know we lived on the same floor. No way, really? That's so awesome! Now we'll be able to catch up! Whatever happened between you and... Yeah, all of a sudden, they're best friends. The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly, I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I didn't know. Oh, wow! What a jerk he turned out to be! My exclamation faded into the buzz of voices in the air. Oh, no. What would I do if we got separated? Anxiously, I searched the crowd of girls for Mai, but I couldn't find her. Everyone was dressed in the same Asagao uniform. It was difficult to tell anyone apart, and being so short really didn't help the situation. Those feels! I am 4 foot 11. I always get lost in crowds. Yeah, Savvy, I, I don't think there's really anything that can really help you with these romance... Uh these romance paths at this point I mean the game has only been out for a couple of days so it's probably going to take a little bit of time for people to write stuff up but hopefully eventually people will write stuff up and then everybody can enjoy all the endings 
As we turned the last corner down the stairwell, I saw a flash of red hair a little ways in front of me. My? I reached between the two girls and tapped her on the shoulder. It was not. Huh? Oh, um... Who are you? The girl's eyes flashed, almost like a jolt of electricity shot through them. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else. She said nothing and turned away. Before I knew it, I stood outside of Primrose House, watching the flow of girls disperse across campus. Mai was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't even hear her chirpy voice. Oh, man. I took a deep breath, biting my lip. This wasn't a big deal. I could go to class alone. But I didn't even know where the building was. I reached into my backpack and dragged out my class schedule. Homeroom. 206 Poppy Hall? Which one was Poppy Hall again? Weren't the classrooms on the other side of campus? I picked the direction and began to walk, trying to ignore my rising panic the thought of arriving late to the first day of class. As a third year, where no one knew me, all of the people staring... Hey! Hey, are you okay? You look a little lost. Someone called out to me and I turned around, almost jumping for joy. Alright, see if I can anticipate who it was that sounded kind of like PBG. So maybe it's PBG? Oh, it's... Okay, it's John. It's hard when it's just a tiny little... Sound bite to pick out who's who. When I froze. A normal boots jacket. He was part of the normal boots club. I could practically feel my tongue swelling in my mouth. If this was a normal boots club member, I had to make a good impression. I, I don't know why she is so intent on joining this normal boots club. I mean, that's awesome. But I just, I mean, besides just randomly seeming to want to join, I mean, I don't know if she's a... She's a gamer? I assume she is. We'll see. He was one of the founders, right? Then he must be JonTron. Um. Um, yes. I'm new. I don't know where Poppy Hall is. <laughs> You're a freshman? No problem. My class is in Poppy Hall. I'll walk you there. Really? Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you didn't correct him. He said you were a freshman. Was this really happening? He began walking toward a large brick building in an enthusiastic manner, puffing his arms up and down like he was in some kind of show tune. <laughs> yeah, that's John. I fell into step beside him. I didn't notice it when Mai pointed him out to me yesterday, but John Chan had big brown eyes and a warm looking face. He was basically a human puppy. It's, that's a, a very good description of John Chan. I glanced up at him out of the corner of my eye. A bird! A bird on his shoulder! Birds always make me uncomfortable. Something about the ease with which they can poke out someone's eyes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, if you're worried about him poking out eyes, trust me, that's... Jacques can do so much worse to you. <laughs> Is something wrong? Why'd you stop? Uh, no, no, nothing's wrong. He followed my gaze to the bird on his shoulder. Hey! Oh! This is Jacques! Isn't he cute? Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm gonna try and do! I'm gonna do a terrible impression of the <laughs> mechanical voice that Jacques has! And it's gonna be awful! <laughs> it... it spoke? <laughs> yeah! He put his hand to his shoulder. Jacques jumped into his palm. Jacques is a robot bird, see? Hello. Jacques' eyes gleamed a dangerous red when he spoke, but nothing else suggested he wasn't a normal bird. In fact, if I hadn't known better, I would have said the red in his eyes was painted on. That's amazing! Jacques twitched his head to the side, examining me in return. The more he looked at me, the less afraid I was. What are you looking at? What? What? Uh, nothing! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, Jacques could be a little sassy. Who are you calling sassy? I'm not the sassy one. I don't forget to feed you. Jacques, that was one time! <laughs> I was alone and starving in the frozen tundra of this empty world. Loveless. Afraid. <laughs> Fucking Jacques! Ignore him. I've been bringing him with me to the drama club and he's taking a little too well to it. 
I see how this is. Shut me out like I have nothing to add to the conversation. Jacques retook his place on John's shoulder, this time facing away from us as if myth. We resumed our walk towards Poppy Hall. I'm John Tron, by the way. Call me John. Hana, nice to meet you. Hana. Hana, that's a cute name. Uh, well, uh, thank you. So how long have you had Jacques? Since middle school. We've been together for four years now, ain't that right? I'm not listening. <laughs> yeah, well, I love him to death. I don't know what I'd do without him. It seems like life would be a lot easier without him, but who was I to say? We arrived at the brick building. A white sign surrounded by poppies declared it to be, unsurprisingly, Poppy Hall. Which room are you in? Room 206. Really? Seriously? Yes? That's my homeroom. We're in the same class. <laughs> I love John's laugh. John laughed and clasped me on the shoulder. Wonderful. I guess I'll be seeing more of you then, right? Yeah. Right. Together we entered Poppy Hall. Poppy Hall was lined with fluorescent lights and Asagal blue lockers. The lack of students milling around in the hallway indicated we were a bit late. We ran up the stairs and made it into the classroom just as the bell rang. Hold on just one second. We ran up the stairs and made it into the classroom just as the bell rang. My heart caught in my throat. Thankfully, the teacher hadn't come yet. Instead, students clumped into tight pods and milled around the classroom, catching up on vacation news. John. Thank you so much for showing me to class, John. See you later. No problem. I'll see you around. He waved and disappeared into the wiggling mass of students. I glanced around the room looking for an empty seat. Anna. My peeled herself out from between a cuddling couple. Was that JonTron? Were you just talking to JonTron? Yeah! Mai's eyes widened and I couldn't help but feeling a little smug. You've talked with three of the normal boots guys at this point. I mean, really. I realized I didn't know the way to class after you and I got separated and he offered to walk me. <laughs> Mai emitted a highly pressurized squeal. John Tron walked you to class? Oh my gosh, you have to tell me everything! She grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me into an empty desk in the back corner of the room, right next to the window. I saved you a seat! I slid in and took off my backpack, hooking it on the side of my desk. I was a little bit worried that the books inside were too heavy for the bag to handle, but so far it held up well. Um, sorry we got separated, by the way. It could get a little chaotic sometimes. So tell me, what happened? What did he say? What did he smell like? Does he have peach fuzz? Is it rough? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> These are very important questions I'm asking. You need to answer them. Was his hair super silky or did it have the roughness of a dog's coat? What is wrong with this woman? <laughs> Before I could answer, the door to the front room slid open and a tall woman strolled in. The class went quiet and obediently slid into their seats. My heart beat furiously, blood rushing through my ears. Class? Good morning, class. The teacher's melodious voice swam through the room, calming the buzzing high of students back from break. My shoulders relaxed and my fear ebbed away. I am your teacher, Shizuka Wakahisa. You may call me Miss Shizuka. The emphasis she placed on the word led me to believe calling her Mrs. wasn't a mistake she would take lightly. Some of you might have noticed that we have a new student this semester. A hail of murmurs passed through the class. Some people glanced at me. Nope, there was the fear again. Mm -hmm. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? I nodded, stood, and slowly walked to the front of the room, counting my steps to make sure I wouldn't fall. I faced the class, took a deep breath and introduced, to introduce myself, and noticed a familiar face in the crowd. There was John, sitting with two other boys wearing normal boots club jackets. One of the boys, the tallest one, was staring at me, the barest of frowns on his face. Oh, Pabagoo, get that frown off your face. Something about him seemed really familiar. Wait, he was PPG, wasn't he? The other founder of the normal boots club? Suddenly all the strength left my knees. 
What should I do? Why was he frowning? Was it possible that I already made a bad impression on him? You had to be kidding me. If he didn't like me, what did that mean about everyone else? Wouldn't they follow his lead? I swallowed. The faces of the class began to congeal, forming one giant blob. You moved from Amari Risu, right? I nodded and swallowed again. Then, like a beacon of light, I noticed my smiling and giving me a thumbs up. That's right. What would Mai do in this situation? Yes. Yes. Just moved here. My name is Hana Mizuno. I transferred from Amari Risu Public High School. I'm really excited to be here. I hope you'll all take good care of me from now on. <laughs> I love when they say that in anime. I hope you'll all take good care of me. I bowed my head to the class and they clapped politely. When I looked up, PPG wasn't frowning, but he still seemed oddly confused. Maybe he always looks like that. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, you may be seated. I returned to my seat, heaving a small sigh. The hardest part of the day was over. Shizuka began to talk about a standard procedure for the semester, the rules for classes, when homework was due, and all of that sort of thing. It was all very similar to my old school, and I spaced out in spite of myself. A brief flicker of movement caught my eye. PBG again. I glanced at him, and his head snapped back to the blackboard. What was his problem? Class continued on like that until finally the bell rang, and it was time for lunch. Uh, Mai stretched her arms over her head and yawned. Man, I hate the first day of class. It's always so boring. Weren't you looking forward to it this morning? Something about exciting things happening? <laughs> well, yeah, but it already did. You met JonTron, didn't you? Now I've got nothing left to look forward to. She sighed. And I was hoping to see Jared before class, too. She slouched and fell across the front of my desk. It seemed like this would be happening a lot. Is Jared really that hot? Mai's head snapped back up, her eyes flashing. <gasps> what did you say? I, uh... If you stare directly at him for too long, your nose will melt off. I've seen it happen. What? What? <laughs> Anyways, let's head to lunch. I'm super hungry. Oh. I looked at my backpack. It held up well throughout class, but I was worried that if I didn't take some of my stuff out now, I might do some permanent damage to it. Especially with Satch's book in there. I couldn't exactly afford a new backpack. I need to put something in my locker first. Oh, no. But if we don't go now, they'll run out of sesame seed buns! <sighs> oh, first world problems! Oh. That's okay. I'll just go on ahead. Come find me, okay? Alright! I was so lucky to have someone like her as my roommate. Okay, um, I think I'm actually gonna pause here. I think this is a good place to save. Um, and I am going to uh, probably pick this up another night. Um, I've been going at this for like a good hour or so. And, um,. You know, tomorrow starts the work week, so I think I'm probably going to call this for tonight. But um, thank you to everybody that popped in. Thank you, Savvy, for hanging out. I hope you'll come back and hang out uh, sometime soon. I hope to get another session or two of this in at some point during the week. Um, for anybody that is in here um, watching, I should probably be picking this up sometime around 6 to 7 p.m., um, Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Wednesday, that's usually the only times I really have free. So hopefully I'll be able to do, um, some more playthrough of this at some point during the week, uh, and hopefully this next weekend as well. Um, I have stuff to do on Saturday, but maybe Saturday morning I can do it. I'll see how my schedule pans out. But um, if you guys are interested, you can follow me on Twitter at the Gina Chew, um, and I'll be tweeting out links to when um, to when I will be streaming more Asagawa Academy. 
And if you guys are on Tumblr, um, my Tumblr name is uh, Gina Sedai, G-I-N-A-S-E-D-A-I. So if you want to check me out on Tumblr too, uh, you know, I post a lot of video game stuff and whatnot there. So if you want to hang out with me on social media, come check me out. Savvy, yay, I'm glad you'll come and, uh, and hang back out with us. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you to everybody who stopped in. Uh, I'm really enjoying this game so far, much more than I thought I would. And I will check in with you guys soon for another round of Asagao Academy. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, have a good night.